Hey, bonsoir on South Africa tonight. Welcome back to ENCA. Banyana Banyana continue to receive the praise they richly deserve. The champions of Africa are being celebrated by the city of Cape Town. Coach Desiree Ellis and some of the players have been welcomed home. ENCA's Justin Ford is there and joins us live. Good evening, Mr. Ford. Cape Town is the home of champs at the moment. The Blitz Box landed there yesterday. And now Banyana coach Desiree Ellis and some of her players. Yeah, good evening, Arthur. Um, the formal proceedings have started. Uh, they were a bit late to get started, but they have started nonetheless. Um, you talk about champions being in Cape Town, the Blitzbox, yes, there's Ellis and some of our players. Um, let's not forget the head office of Esther Rugby is here, so the Springbok champions are here in Cape Town as well. Maybe you should ask uh, Safa and um, CSA to move down to Cape Town. <laughs> but nonetheless, yes. Um, an apt moment for these players um, and the coach to be in Cape Town at Athlone Stadium. Um, the South Africa president uh, in Cape Town, Bennett Bailey, calling Athlone Stadium the home of football. But um, a very proud moment for these players. Um, the coach only landed in Cape Town yesterday, but a very proud and happy moment for them to be able to be here uh, and obviously have some fans as well to, to celebrate them. President. Coach uh, Desiree Ellis is having a fitting homecoming. What were the coach's thoughts when you caught up with her before the start of this event? Yeah, thankfully I had a bit of a moment with her and, you know, what a humble um, person she is. Um, I kept on asking her about herself and, and her achievements and her journey, but she kept on throwing it through to the team. And the technical team, um, you know, she she remembers that grueling nine minutes of added time that was added uh, to the game, you know, uh, at the end or at least of the regular time. But she talks about the fact that, you know, they felt South Africans supporting them throughout their tournament. And this is what she had to say. You can see I still have a smile on my face. I think, you know, we're still trying to absorb everything. I think we don't realize the magnitude of, of what we've done. Um, President Mandela said football unites or sport unite and I think we surely did in this trying time with load shedding and everything else and people made a plan when it was load shedding at home they would go visit someone else or they'd go on radio and they'd listen to it on the radio and we really appreciate that you know when we played the final even though the stadium was 50 odd thousand we knew there was 60 million behind us Oh, wonderful to hear, you know, just her thoughts again on South Africa welcoming the champions back uh, home. Is there any word on whether the team has received the money that is due to them, Justin? That's the million-dollar question. And like you... Arthur, I think that's a question on many, pe many people's minds. Um, Desiree Ellis, we didn't talk about that specifically, but she does, however, have confidence in the South African Football Association. She knows the president has made promises. She knows the Minister of Sport has made promises. She knows that Danny Yordan, the South African president, has made uh, promises to the team. So they are going to hold them to that, um, and hopefully that does arrive um, for these players that richly deserve those those accolades as well as those rewards. All right. I mean, talk to us about some of the dignitaries who will be at the event uh, tonight. Justin? So we have the mayor of the city of Cape Town, uh, Jordan Hill Lewis, who is present, uh, the SAFA Cape Town president, Bennett Bailey. Uh, we have a few of the players, five players. And then there's also some family members who are representing players who unfortunately cannot be here. Uh, and there is a special moment where the players will be handed with a, handed a certain uh, medal that has been made here in Cape Town. Um, so those representatives are here as well. But I think the larger Cape Town fraternity that have come out to in celebrate this team young boys and girls, girls that will be inspired by the achievements of Anya. I think that is most important. And I think those are the dignitaries that we should look at uh, to know that these young girls will be inspired. Justin, after this victory, there will be more pressure on Banyana and their coach. Do you see them growing as a result of that? American novelist, poet... Look, I think another thing that I did manage to speak to Desiree about, uh, Coach Desiree, that is, uh, is now the way forward to the World Cup. She understands that being the African champions, women's African champions, comes with a certain bit of pressure on their shoulders. 
they do I ever believe in their system, something that they've worked towards um, and, and worked on and something that has contributed towards winning um, the African uh, Cup of Nations in Morocco. So it's pressure that they uh, accept, something that they will believe they will be strong enough. Uh, they've been at the World Cup before and the plan this time around is to, to exit that group stage and, and hopefully get to the knockout stage of the competition. So pressure, yes, but something that this team is confident of. Um, I know another big thing will have to be Corporate South Africa coming on board. The Banyana team, they've had Sassel as the only solitary sponsor uh, for the longest time. And I think Desiree also mentioned the fact that, you know, if any other corporate should be jealous of the fact that Sassel is, is on board with this team. And I think it's that involvement, that financial backing that this team now needs to take them to that next step and hopefully to a lot better uh, in, at the World Cup next year. All right, Justin, in closing, South Africa's had many false dawns in terms of the growth of women's football. Could this be a watershed moment? We look back on 10 years from now in terms of the women's game. Absolutely, Arthur. I think, you know, moments like these really... Um, show success, show the work that has been put in and shows that if effort is put into a certain um, sporting code um, that the results can uh, come from there. Um, so with that being said, Coach Des is, is confident that, that this will provide a perfect springboard um, for, for the next generation to come. They are a generation uh, based on ones that have come before them, coaches, players before them. Um, and Amanda Bamini is also here, one of the former Banyana, Banyana players. So I think this moment definitely um, will hopefully inspire that and, and, and see more young girls get involved in the sport and only allow for women's football in the country to get stronger. Oh, thanks for your coverage all the way out in Cape Town. Justin Ford, of course, at the Athlone Stadium in the Mother City, as, of course, uh, the province welcomes their champion and the champion coach uh, in Desiree Ellis after they made in WAFCON 2022 title. All right, Sally, that's what...